Well, hello there guys and girls. Today we're going to have a look at this uh, this little dash cam here. It is a um, a dual cam dash cam. It's the one where you've got to have the uh, the camera in the side of it. Don't mind the blue tack, that's just to stop the buttons from rattling around. Because it does have rattly buttons. Now these um, these suffer from a, th a thing where it uh, the batteries are knackered in it. Enough batteries. Now the batteries in these are supposed to be the lithium uh, lithium polymer cells, or is it lithium iron, one of the two uh, cells. They use, I think it's the Maxi 232 chip to charge them up, I'm not sure. Um, but it uses a little microchip to regulate the voltage and whatnot. However that thing doesn't work in this particular camera very well, so I've bypassed it and I've built my own charging circuit as you can see. Um, the USB port can still be used, so that's all nice. Uh, I've just used a, sim a very simple computer fan and a socket to uh, to plug into the camera. Um, but one of the things I wanted to show you on this was to show you how bad the charging circuit is on these things. I've got a little tester, uh, a little voltage meter plugged into it, which is very accurate. I must I must say, um, and a book boost um, transformer based system uh, converter, uh, which is currently converting my old source bottles, a 12 volts plug in the wall transformer uh, which is plug in the wall at 12 volts 500 milliamps, it's not much but it's enough um, but what it's doing is currently converting downwards 12 volts to about 4.2 volts uh, it's just set slightly below that but you can change it with a little capacitor there. Um, however, I just wanted to show you how off this voltage circuit is. So I power up the camera which now powers up nicely. This is on battery power. So I am using, not, I'm not plugging 5 volts in, the 5 volt line is not plugged in at the moment. I've not wired that in yet. I'm just wired in the 3 volt line. We're going to call it the 3 volt line or the battery line because what I've done with the camera is I've disabled the internal battery. I've taken it out completely because it was just so bad. Um, camera is working. I should have the LEDs on. Yeah, I do. There you go. LEDs are on. It is currently recording. Uh, I've got a 32 uh, gigabyte card in there, which is recording too. <clears throat> and um, if we look, we can see it's currently running uh, 4.12 volts because it's got a bit of a current drop drop on it. Right. If I was to zoom into this. Now you can see, if I can find my little screwdriver, I don't know how well this is going to come out on the video, but you can see this little icon here, that is the battery meter. So I'm going to try and get in both your shots and I'm going to turn the voltage down to 3.6 volts, which is what the batteries are rated at. Bear with me a second. There we go, we're going down, look. And you can see how much this battery is going down. Now it's at 3.9 volts. Slowly going down, 3.7 volts, and it's like, oh, hang on a minute, it's going flat. How can this be? Turn it down 3.6, and it's uh, low power, and it turns itself off. So, now the only problem is with these cameras is that <coughs> I'm steaming the lens with my hands. <coughs> the only problem is with this camera is that. Um, the charging circuit only delivers 4 volts charge. Now you think that's all well and good, but when you remember that these lithium ion or lithium polymer batteries have these smart charging systems where they charge up at various voltages from 4.2 to 3.6 depending on what condition the battery's in. Well, like I say, uh, on this particular camera, the charging circuit only used to push out about 3.9 uh, volts. So it never charged the battery up to 100%. Um, and the battery itself just wasn't capable of producing that voltage anyway, unless it was really high voltage. I'll just turn the voltage back up now. We'll put it back up to about 3.2. Uh, sorry, 4.2. So get to about 4.9. Near enough, damn it. And we'll power up the camera again. <clears throat> it does drop down a little bit. 
but yeah, as you can see, it's it's happy and good, and that it's recording again. So, um, how how very odd. But it's not recording. There we go. It's recording now. So, how very bizarre. And I've got uh, my camera's audio is is, is working. Uh, you can see the LEDs. I can turn the LEDs off with the power button. That's on auto mode. And they're off. See, before when I used to run this camera, I used to have to run it on the 5 volt standard car charger, which came with the camera, but I had to turn the LEDs off. I also had to disable the backlight on the LCD panel because it used to draw so much electricity. From, from, you know, from uh, it used to draw that much electricity, it used to constantly think the battery was flat, which was a right pain in the backside. But uh, I was just I just gone through this just to show you the differences between the two, the voltages and what the display set actually says. <laughs> Compensating light levels. Cameras are pretty good in the uh, in the dark actually. Say so, I've got another YouTube video on there of me picking me dad up um, when when he went out uh, for a little uh, you know drink 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 in town with with a couple of work friends. But, uh, yeah. Right, anyway, I think that's about it for this video. Six minutes of rambling on about this camera. But, yeah, I'm going to use this system in the car, so it's going to be powered directly from 12 volts. I'm going to have the original transformer plugged into it because I can't be asked to wire up the 12 volt side. Sorry, the 5 volt side. Um, and so, it's going to be a... What do you call it? It's going to be a camera that's driven from the car ignition and also a constant life directly from the car battery. Um, so in other words, it means I can leave the motion detection turned on on the camera and it will never uh, it will never go flat. The camera can record constantly and never go flat, which is fantastic. Uh, but only on motion detect, obviously. Which, uh, with motion detect, it has to constantly have the camera running and monitoring, but obviously not recording, but as soon as it, re as soon as it detects someone there, it starts re recording. And of course, you have to use uh, these lights, as you can imagine, are pretty damn annoying at night time. So you just use a little bit of tape and tape over the lights because flashing lights like that, yeah, they get quite annoying at uh, at night time. I don't know if I've got a cable anywhere to plug it into because uh, I could soon plug it into a computer, but I've not sadly. Oh well, I might do another video of it in the car. So, alright, guys and girls, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.